Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked. I think let's go through them briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Divina in the Desert Spring. We have a Visconti Divina in the brown, and these are oversized Divinas, not the midi. We have a Visconti Divina Elegance in the green. We have a Visconti Divina Blue Typhoon. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. A Visconti Homo Sapiens Florentine Hills. A Visconti Homo Sapiens and this is the bronze swirl. We have a Visconti Homo sapiens Chianti Shire. Uh, we have a Visconti Homo sapiens Blue Lagoon. And a Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up in a little bit more detail. So I did have the Davinas inked up last week. And I'm still trying to write these dry. Um, this is a beautiful material. Um, this is a celluloid. Uh, it's not a, a resin, uh, and you can see the, the beauty in this celluloid. Um, I do find that it sparkles quite a lot. There's a bit of chatoyancy going on there. Uh, I, I have said in the past, it reminds me of the luscious red uh, earth and sands of Cornwall in the UK. Um, it really is a nice pen. Um, it does have a captured converter, which you pull out and you twist. So it is a converter inside the body. You cannot remove it. Um, so if the converter fails, it's a little bit of an issue because the rest of the pen will be glued together. Uh, it does have a 23 cap palladium stub nib. It's a medium nib. Um, the uh, limited edition version has an ink window here. Uh, I never did actually get the limited edition version. I got this one. Uh, the limited edition version was twice the price. So this was early on in my uh, fountain pen collecting days. So I decided uh, I would get the cheaper version of of that. And I think sometimes this, this still rings true as well, that in some of the pens I've got, I've picked up the cheaper version. I'm just thinking out loud about the um, Tweeko Seishu Dragons that I picked up in March uh, this year at the pen show. Uh, I picked up the prototype versions because they were cheaper. So sometimes that does ring true. Sometimes I do want the the, the full uh, version of the pen. Um, the next pen inked up again this week is the Visconti Divina in the brown. Uh, and this was a, it's a beautiful brown. Uh, I, I have a friend, Tony, that really would like this pen. I picked it up for a steal of a price. It was half price. Uh, on an auction and I seem to be the only one that I think I was the only one that bid on this one uh, but it did take a long time to actually uh, get it to arrive but uh, I, I'm glad that I picked this one up again the captured converter here as well uh, these do have silver rods twisting around the pen and they do match up from the cap to the body uh, very nice pen uh, hook safe lock on all of the Davinas a 23 cap palladium medium nib there as well. You can post all of these caps. The rods do line up. You can see there. Um, uh, mostly line up, I would say. Maybe they're a few millimeters out in some cases. But there you go. Look, I, I can twist that and then it will um, line up. But uh, you can post these caps, which are great if you are a cap poster. Uh, that you can do that with ease. And they will line up. The next pen is the uh, Visconti Divina Elegance in green. Uh, I think this was the first pen that they called the Elegance. Uh, I think the other ones were just oversized brown, oversized blue. And, uh, but it was this one they called the Elegance. And I have to say, it really is elegant. Um, the, all of these Divina Metropolitans, uh, including well, sorry, the Divina Oversizes, and then the, the smaller Metropolitan midi size ones, they all have captured converters in. Uh, I do think that these captured converters should hold more ink but uh, compared to the, the MIDI versions. Um, but I do like these oversized ones. Again, this comes with a 23 cap palladium uh, medium nib. And again, uh, these are actually a really good size in the hand. 
um, and you can obviously post those caps as well. So uh, I do still find a little bit back weighted, not a huge amount, but uh, if you are a cap poster and you have to post your caps, certainly look at these. The, the Davinas have gone up a lot in price. So these were around about, when I started buying these, these were around about 600. Uh, and then they, they've gone up to like a thousand and more. Um, so obviously prices, inflation increasing, uh, it's, it, it is one of those things. So, uh, if I were to sell these pens now, then maybe I could make a little bit more than, than I paid for them. They are used though. They're not brand new, but, uh, does that really matter? I, I always thought long and hard that I would never buy used pens because they were for the better world word soiled that they, they, they were used and but i got out of that and and i there have been quite a lot of pens that i bought used in my collection and i do not consider being used uh and they have been used but they're in such good condition that it doesn't bother me and i would happily pay the full price for those used pens if i couldn't get them anywhere else so maybe if i sell these at some point uh down the road then maybe i i will make at least what i paid for them Maybe a little bit more with with the way inflation has been going. It's only going up. The next one here is the Visconti Divina. And there is a regular blue edition. And then there's this one, which is a limited edition. Um, it doesn't say there on there. But uh, I there you go. Um, it has a limited edition run there. And it's number 35 of 100 uh, there you go i can just get it on camera there um so this is the blue typhoon blue without an e uh and the typhoon is because it has a lot of black veins i believe going through it like a, a swirly typhoon uh this this really is beautiful pen it has a lot of chatoyance there as well uh again hook safe lock mechanism it's a captured converter 23 cap palladium medium nib and yes still they post so if you, th these these are probably some of the more balanced uh pens posting there is a little bit of a back weight but not a huge amount so uh for me like if you wanted to post that cap you can do so i have posted some of those caps when i've written with them and they are fairly comfortable uh to to write with now the pen that that really sent me down uh, the this this route of uh, Visconti's and I want to say seventy nine I think I have now was this one such a beautiful pen it's the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog and I wanted to show you all of these demonstrator pens uninked first because they are beautiful and sadly when you ink them up you lose a lot of that because you don't get the light coming through shining some of that lovely blue uh what is effectively celluloid shavings that, that are in that demonstrator um these have a hook safe lock mechanism it's a double reservoir uh paravac filler at 23 cap palladium fine nib I wanted to get this in a medium uh, and they didn't have it uh, at uh, pure pens when I bought it. Um, but uh, I tried to find it and I fell in love with it. And uh, after that, literally the next day, I decided to buy the other pen that had a medium nib in it. But you can see the beauty in that ribbon. It is just awesome. Uh, you can still get these pens. 888 were made or have it is a limited edition one of 888 and when i say were made that they're not most of these pen manufacturers don't make if they're going to make 888 in a limited edition one they're not going to make all 888 in one go typically uh, i think visconti in the past have have made the first batch would have 250 and then each subsequent batch would be around 100 or 150 pens and they trickle these out over numbers of years. So you might think that suddenly like these pens, you can't find them anywhere. And, and then suddenly they become available again uh, because they have been made newly and, and put back into the distribution channel. Uh, so, so 
and that's the same with any of these pen manufacturers, Montegrappa, Stipula, um, Anoto even. So, um, and it really depends on how many pens, like for Visconti, if, if it's a limited edition of 188 pens or less, then they're probably going to do the full batch uh, in one go and they will sell out. But if you're talking 888 pens or more, then then they're going to be done in, in batches uh, over a number of years. Now, the next pen I, I did actually buy uh, the next day because this had the medium nib on was this one. And it's the Visconti uh, Homo Sapiens. And uh, this is the Florentine Hills. Now, you will see there's a little bit of, of staining here in the uh, body. Um, and you can get that where the piston rod will sit um, uh, when, when you pull it back. Um, but ultimately, you're not going to see that when the pen is inked up. Uh, so it's only when it's not inked will you see that. Uh, this was a limited edition one of a thousand uh, pens. Uh, and I got this with a 23 cap palladium medium nib there. Uh, and, and these all will post quite nicely. The London Fog will post as well. Uh, so, so that is uh, quite a, a nice pen. Uh, that is a very wet medium. It almost like a easily a broad nib, Western broad. It's it's just very wet, very broad. Um, so I do like writing with that. Although I have to say I still prefer uh, the fine nib on the London Fog. I, I can swap these nibs out, and I probably should at some point put maybe a medium or a fine in. I've got other mediums in. Uh, well, that's a medium already, but I've got other fine nibs that I probably could put in there. I think at one point I did put a medium nib in the London Fog, and then I went back to the fine again because I liked it so much. The next pen here was uh, the oh, is the Visconti Homo Sapiens, and it's a bronze swirl, so you can see that swirl there. Beautiful pattern. Um, very coffee, uh, mocha, latte, cappuccino-like. Uh, color uh, like it's, it's got a, a an ivory colored resin here um, very very nice pen uh, again like there might be some stainings or discoloration may not look as polished inside um, but when you ink it up you're not going to notice it so much uh, it's got a 23 cap palladium and it's got a stub nib on there um, and uh, I uh, had the opportunity of reviewing this and buying this uh, review sample and uh, I did ask at the time because I was still in a kick for 23 cap palladium stub nibs so I did ask for a stub nib on that one and of course a lot of the stub nibs are a little bit over polished so they do hard start and skip a bit uh, especially in the more summer months and that's typically why I went away from the stub nibs because as much beauty they are to show the ink I typically find a broad nib a little bit more forgiving in that sense and also being able to write with a narrower line width as well the stub nibs i have to write with like 12 millimeter line width whereas the uh, fine medium broad nibs i can write in a seven millimeter sometimes even a five millimeter line width although typically five millimeter is normally around a fine nib i can get away with it in a fine nib the next pen here is the visconti homo sapiens Kianta shear. Now, this will stain a little bit, a tinge of a, a red color. If you're going to put red ink in, in a demonstrator, it is going to stain over time. Uh, so you do have to be mindful of that. Uh, again, it doesn't bother me. When I have it inked up, it doesn't matter. If I were to sell it, obviously, um, I would have to sell it for less because it's stained. It doesn't look like new, maybe, but uh, I, I do love the pen as well. Uh, I got this with a 23 cap palladium medium nib on there. And again, these do post as well. They are uh, power vac fillers, double reservoir. So they hold two and a half milliliters of ink. Uh, so I have, uh, will have that one inked up. But all of these uh, demonstrators here, I wanted to show you without the ink in them. So you can see some of the beauty of, of those. I think this one actually also looks beautiful when it's inked up because there is gold here as well uh, but you're still not going to see a lot of these red uh, swirly patterns 
Uh, Chiantashir is the wine region of, of Italy, uh, hence the name Chiantashir. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Blue Lagoon. And again, another one that I do like. Um, it's very turquoisey colour ink uh, or, or pen colour. Uh, and I have in the past inked that up with a turquoisey colour ink. Uh, very, very nice pen. Uh, the uh, It's got a hook safe lock mechanism, power vac, double reservoir, two and a half millilitres of ink it holds. Uh, and uh, this come with a newer 18 cat gold uh, medium nibs from Visconti. Uh, these are the so-called in-house nibs made by a, an in-house jeweler, although I, I think technically it's not an in-house jeweler, it's a jeweler that they subcontract to, but uh, but these are actually um, uh, very nice nibs, I, I, I have to say. like I, I've heard a lot of people in the past complain about the older 18 cat gold nibs, uh, the 23 cat palladium nibs, uh, the newer 18 cat gold nibs, and I don't know. I, I I get to the point where I feel that some people just are not happy. Uh, each, each nib is going to write differently, and uh, I've never had an issue uh, that's not correctable. Like some nibs will be more bouncy, some nibs will be more stiffer. Some nibs might a medium might write like a medium, some might write like a broad, and and I I do get that that can be disappointing. If you bought a medium and it writes like a broad and you really can't write with broads uh, or likewise if you buy a medium and it writes like a fine perhaps and you don't like fine nibs um, but like there's always ways of improving that like if it's a if it's a fine writing more um, finer then you can make it write more like a medium by um, opening the tines up and that it's a little bit more difficult the other way around, though. Uh, but yeah, th there are things that you can do. You can get nibs reground. Um, uh, the, the the thing is, all nibs are going to be different. If if you if you have twenty nibs, whether or not it's Visconti, whether or not it's Bok, whether or not it's Yovo, you're going to see a difference between each of those nibs. Uh, it's it's just the way it's going to be. And um, a lot of people will harp on about certain brands uh, of nibs uh, and pens because it's what they've heard a lot of people complaining about and and it's it's a difficult one like for me like i do i mind if i buy a medium nib and it writes a little bit more like a fine no i i don't and likewise if it was a medium and it writes a little bit more broad um i, I don't mind that so much um maybe am i a little bit disappointed possibly but but I'll get over it really quickly. And, and if I want to, I can swap the nibs out. But I get it, though, that some of you can't do that. And and if you buy a medium, you want a medium. And if that's the case, you're going to find that variation with all brands of pens. So if you're really that concerned, you need to try writing with the exact pen that you're going to buy uh, and not just buy it online because uh, you could be disappointed. And that's not Visconti, not just with Visconti could be any brand of pens or nibs. The last pen uh, inked up this week is the Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust. Uh, again, beautiful pen here. Really, really nice pen. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, smoky-like. It al almost reminds me of like the 1980s when you'd walk into a room, maybe in a pub or a bar, and it's just a mist of swirly smoke. Uh, this is when you could smoke indoors back then and smoke tobacco and and pubs and clubs and and restaurants would be like that and it very much reminds me of that kind of smoky like appearance beautiful pen so glad i picked this one up when i did uh it's got a 23 cap palladium fine nib on it uh, and you can post these caps i've shown this before but you can post them. The caps are a little bit more heavier, so they are a little bit more back weighted. But if if you've got a high angle of writing like that, then uh, I guess like that probably show you would be a bit easier. Then then that wouldn't be so bad. But if you've got a lower writing angle, um, actually maybe you won't feel it so much. You probably feel it more at a higher angle than a lower angle actually. Um, but uh, that's just um, something to bear in mind. If you are going to post Visconti Opera Masters, they are long pens and they're heavy pens or heavy-ish and, and the caps are quite heavy as well. 
So that's my 10 pens currently inked up this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here is the Visconti, and this is a Davina in the Desert Spring. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And this is uh, a beautiful ink. I really should ink this pen up in a, an orangey reddish color, but I just love this ink in this pen. This is the Visconti Divina Desert Spring. And uh, it's a medium and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. Uh, and then the ink in here is uh, Pilot Eroshizuku Satsuji. But that is a very beautiful hot pink, which has a lovely gold sheen to that ink. The next pen is the Visconti Divina Oversize in Brown. So we'll do another uh, ink swatch here. And I have to say, actually, this is actually a really nice color of brown. I think it matches this pen very well. It's the uh, Visconti uh, Divina, uh, and it's the brown, oversized in brown. Uh, it's a medium, and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Waterman Absolute Brown. Uh, which previously I think was called Havana Brown. Havana after the cigars. Uh, but I think Waterman went through a bit of a rebranding of ink colours and decided to call it Absolute Brown. The next pen inked up is a Visconti Divina Elegance in Green. So we'll do another ink swatch here. And... This, I think, is a very lovely bright green, uh, one that I like a lot. So this is the Visconti um, Divina Elegance in green. And it's a medium, and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine Meadow, which, interestingly, in this pen looks quite light and almost towards Diamine Apple Glory, I would say. I do like this uh, colour ink. It really is a nice ink. Uh, in some pens, though, it's a little bit more darker, I would say, typically in the more wetter, broader nib pens. The next pen is the Visconti Davina Blue Typhoon. So we'll do another ink swatch here. And again, it's another medium nib. Um, a lot of the Viscontis that I picked up in the early days were medium nibs. So this is the Visconti Davina Blue Typhoon. So blue without an E. Uh, and it's a medium and it's a 23 cap palladium nib and then the ink in here it's quite simply Visconti blue um, but that is uh, a lovely blue ink and one that grew on me over a, a long period of time and it was just something that I, I really really did like now the uh, next pen is the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog now typically I would I ink this up with Pilot Ross Shizuku uh kiri uh was it yeah uh kiri Sa was it no not kiri sami that's a gray um oh i can't remember the name of it now pilot washizuku let me have a look that's gonna i'm gonna kick myself there compeki compeki is is a nice thing but i decided i would ink this up with visconti blue um and just see what the fine nib uh, would write with. Um, when I say ink up, I, I've actually not inked the body of the pen up because Visconti Blue can stain and stain demonstrated. So I'm just dipping the nib on this one. 
Um, but you can see here the difference, maybe. Uh, so this is Visconti, not a D, is it? It's Homo sapiens. Uh, London fog. Um, and then it's a fine and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. Um, but I think you can start to see a bit of a difference here already. This is writing darker than this one because it is a slightly more wetter uh, experience here. So obviously the ink is Visconti blue again. Um, I, I do need to think about what ink to put in there. I know a lot of people have said to me, I should maybe uh, put um, a, a grey ink like diamine or grey or something in there because uh, that would also look quite nice. Uh, but I've just always refrained from putting a grey ink in there for some reason. Uh, I typically do like more lighter blues, cerulean blues, turquoisey blues. Uh, and I'm going to ink that one back up. Uh, fully but at the moment I'm not so sure what ink I want to put in there um, kind of thinking China blue there's a bow blue from diamine uh, but I'm, I'm tempted to put a turquoise color ink in there although I do need to be a little bit careful with the demonstrators I don't want to stain that one so uh, Pilot of Ostrizuku Compeki is a nice safe ink for demonstrators so I think I possibly will just ink it back up with that longer term uh, if I do uh, go beyond this week the next pen uh, will be inked up is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Florentine Hills so we'll do an ink swatch now this nib uh, is very over polished uh, for a medium nib uh, and is probably one of my very few Visconti nibs that will hard start and skip a lot um, so uh, I do have to be more mindful in, mindful in the summer months and we are in the summer months now of, uh, of not using the pen because it will hard start and skip a lot more especially with the grease from my hand on the page uh, typically I, I do actually write with um, like a postcard under my hand the glossy side will stick to the bottom of my hand and I just move it around the page that helps a lot um, but this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. And it's the Florentine Hills. But this is a superbly bouncy nib. Um, medium nib as well. So uh, this is a 23 cap palladium nib. So sometimes you can get some really firm palladium nibs. And, and from what I recall, uh, when I spoke to Dante a number of times before, he said the original nibs were so bouncy, like this one, that, that potentially people were springing them. So they went back to the drawing board and actually decided that they were going to add more alloy to them and, and make them more stiffer. And that's why you, you see the difference. So this is uh, uh, this one I, I inked up with uh, Diamine Meadow. Um, but I, I'll show you this because I, th this is the medium, but you can you can get quite some line variation out of that nib. So it, it will flex quite a lot. Um, maybe not to vintage flex, but it's not that far off some of those vintage nibs. It, it, it will flex a lot, but again, you have to be careful with these because... If you're not careful, you can spring those tines. And I, I still haven't sprung a Visconti nib. Uh, I did spring a stipular nib at one point. Um, but you, this is it. You can spring nibs. If, if you if you keep pushing and you're pushing quick and, and hard rather than slowly, um, then yes, you, you can uh, easily do that. The next pen is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Swirl. Now, I think in the past I've inked this up with, uh, it's not KWZ Cappuccino, because that's an ink that I've got recently. Uh, I think it was Robert Oster. Uh, Cafe Crema is uh, an ink that I've uh, inked this up with in the past. Um, now, 
I would almost say that Diamine Ochre is not that much dissimilar to Robert Oster Cafe Crema. So this is uh, a uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens uh, and it is the um, Bronze Swirl I forgot what it was then Bronze Swirl uh, and it's a 1.3 millimeter 23 cat palladium stub nib uh, and then the ink in here today is diamine ochre and um, that for me is a nice uh, brown colored ink and I have to say it is one that I do like a lot uh, I think uh, my favorite browns of all browns was uh, the Akamon uh, it, originally Dutch Masters, then it became a regular uh, SBRE brown ink. Uh, and then I discovered Diamine Ochre, which is very, very similar to SBRE brown. Maybe not quite as orangey. Maybe it's a slighter, darker color. But it, it is one that, that I like uh, a lot. So um, I, I have got a lot of bottles of Diamine Ochre. And I know some people say that you shouldn't have a lot of bottles of ink because they might develop mold, blah, 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 blah. But, but ultimately, I have just, yeah, I've got 400 odd bottles. I had, uh, the only bottles I've had mold in in the past have been Monteverde. And typically Monteverde have had mold issues. Uh, I've not had mold in any of my other inks. So for me, I've had a good run in that. But, but uh, I know some people do get moldy bottles. So uh maybe 400 inks is probably not good to have in a collection but uh, probably most of these inks i'm not ever going to use or, or use uh, empty the bottles on so i might give them away end up maybe selling them for cheap or or maybe flushing them down the sink uh because i'm sure there's going to be some inks i'm just never going to use the next pen uh, that will be inked up is the visconti homo sapiens kiantashir now I think in the past I put Waterman Audacious Red in and and it didn't stain originally, but then I noticed after a period of time it did. So, I, but I think I prior to that I put in Diamine Hoppy Red. So, uh, the, the problem with red inks is that they will stain. Sometimes, sometimes you can get orange inks or brown inks that will stain as well. Uh, but uh, this one I've got a different ink this uh, today. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Uh, and uh, it's the Kianta Shear. Uh, and then it's a uh, medium 23 cap palladium nib. Uh, and then the uh, ink in here is Visconti Bordeaux, which I think is actually a really good match uh, for this pen. Yeah, D there, Bordeaux. Um, but uh, that is a nice uh, color ink and pen. Um, I, I do think Visconti missed the boat a little bit there because they brought out what was a, a Visconti Homo Sapiens cap at Mundi at one point. And then uh, because it was so popular and I think there were only 50 available and I got, I got one of those. They then brought out the US version, which I think only had 25 numbered edition and they called it the red wine and technically the Chianti Shear is a red wine so so they couldn't call it red wine at that point so they called it Chianti Shear, I guess but uh, it's an interesting pen and uh, I do like it so uh, it, it's one that I, I do like uh, in my collection the next pen is a Visconti Homo Sapiens Blue Lagoon uh, so I think we'll, we'll do another ink swatch here um, now, typically, I've inked this up with a turquoise colored ink. Uh, trying to change it a little bit here today. Uh, I guess it is turquoisey. It's, it, it's, it's a lighter blue, but not maybe turquoise. Um, but you'll, you'll see the name of this ink in a little bit. So you'll, you'll understand why I, I use this. So this is the uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens. Uh, and it's a blue lagoon. Uh, and 
it's a medium and it's uh, an 18 cat gold uh, nib. Um, so it's the newer 18 cat gold nib from Visconti. But the medium I find writes actually more like a fine. So this is where sometimes you can find a Visconti, a medium writes like a fine, a fine like, writes like a medium, a medium might like write like a broad. Uh, there will be some discrepancies, but it's not just Visconti, it's all manufacturers. And typically most manufacturers will use either one of two nibs. It will be a Bok nib or, or a Yovo nib uh, in a lot of cases, unless they make their own nibs. But you're even still going to get the variations there. So, so this is uh, this the ink in here actually is a, a KWZ. Um, it's an exclusive ink, and it's called a uh, Hawaii Blue. So you can understand why I decided to ink that up uh, with this uh, pen because it's uh, a nice light Hawaiian blue, like blue lagoon, tropical blue kind of uh, a pen color, and and Hawaii Blue as an ink. I think actually goes uh, some way towards uh, that color there and then the last pen inked up is a Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust and we'll do an ink swatch here so this is a fine nib um, but it does have some bounce to this nib and I have to say I do like it and I think I, I did swap this nib over into my London Fog at one point and then swapped it back um, because I actually like the one in the, the London Fog. Uh, I like this one as well, but I think I like the one in London Fog a little bit more. So this is the Visconti uh, Opera Master Golden Dust. And it's a fine, and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is... Um, so double check, uh, diamine ochre, which you're going to see uh, compared to this one, it's a very different color. So when I say that this ink is a very good replacement for Ackerman SBRE Brown, if you like that brown ink, but you can't get it because it's sold out, then if, if you're writing in a finer nib or a, a less wetter nib, then you're going to find it's a nice sort of uh, lighter orangey brown, uh, but you're going to see it a much darker brown if you're going to write in a very wet or broad uh, or stub nib. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we've got a Visconti Divina Desert Spring in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Pilot Washizuku Satsuji. We have a Visconti Davina Brown uh, oversized in the medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Waterman Absolute Brown. We have a Visconti Davina Elegance in Green in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Diamine Meadow. We have a Visconti Davina Blue Typhoon in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Visconti Blue. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog in a 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Visconti Blue. And I would say actually now that they're dried that these are almost identical. Uh, maybe this one is slightly more darker. Uh, we have a Visconti Homo sapiens Florentine Hills in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Diamine Meadow. We have a Visconti Homo sapiens uh, Bronze Swirl in a 1.3 millimeter 23 cap palladium stub nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. We have a Visconti Homo sapiens Chiantis Gyre in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Visconti Bordeaux. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Blue Lagoon in a medium 18 cap gold nib inked up with KWZ Hawaii Blue. And then we have a Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust in a fine 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. So there you have it. That's my Coney ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.